Hi, and welcome to our video today. My name is Dr. Alif Musaji, also known as the Smiling Dentist. And today, we're going to talk about occlusion. <laughs> Occlusion is a really important topic and unfortunately it's really badly understood as well amongst dentists. So what I really want to do today is to try and dispel some of the myths around occlusion and simplify it as much as I can so that you can help your patients better to understand the bite and the importance of it in their own mouths. Whenever I talk to patients, I always explain to them that the mouth is a machine and it works well when all the components are working well. And what I'm trying to explain to them is the concept of the mutually protected occlusion. This is a really simple topic. All we're trying to convey to our patients is that the back teeth are there to fulfill a function and the front teeth are also there to fulfill a function. The back teeth are like pillars. They really help when we're biting up and down to stop our jaws from closing more than they should. And when these pillars are there, they stop the, the jaw from closing too much and hence putting too much load on the front teeth, which are not designed to really take too much load up and down. The front teeth are normally arranged like this, where there's an overlap with the lower teeth biting up against the cingulum of the upper teeth. Now the reason it's arranged like this is because we don't only bite up and down, we also bite side to side as well, our jaws move laterally. And what we want to happen is that when we posture our jaws forwards, i.e. slide like this, then not only do the, does the lower jaw move forwards, but it also opens the bite up. Now when this happens, the back teeth are no longer together. They open so that they can move freely at the back of the mouth. So it doesn't put big lateral forces, which the back teeth are not normally able to withstand very well. So it's protecting. So you can see the back teeth protect the front teeth by being pillars and the front teeth protect the back teeth because they open to disclude the back teeth. Why is it so important to protect these back teeth and not allow them to have this lateral force? Well, the mouth is a class two lever. So it's a bit like a nutcracker. And I explain this to my patients. I say to them, the nutcracker works because you put a small force, relatively, at one end and as you go closer to the hinge where it moves, the force is greater, big enough for you to crack a nut. And our mouths are the same. As you go closer to the hinge at the back, the forces are greater. So if we are putting inappropriate force on back teeth, they will get a big force and they'll break more easily. Now this has a massive clinical significance, especially when you see patients who have got wear on their front teeth. Imagine if you have this good overlap, then you get this nice disclusion on the back teeth and so they move freely. But if the front teeth wear down, then they will rub against each other and not open the jaw as much. This means the back teeth will rub and you'll get lateral forces, which will often lead to breakage on the back teeth. Occlusal disease is not something that will manifest overnight. So what I always try to do with my patients is to have conversations like this as early on in my consultation with process with them as I possibly can. And then I leave that information with them. And if we see evidence and a, build up a picture of things that are going bad, then we are in a position where we can say, do you remember this conversation that we had? Do you remember how it can apply to your mouth? And perhaps we can then suggest treatment to them 
perhaps we can make for them a stabilization splint like a Michigan or a Tanner kind of appliance or we can start talking about rehabilitating them either by building up their front teeth to give them back the guidance that they need or even doing a full mouth approach if we need to give them back some opening on the back teeth as well. So one of the most important principles is the mutually protected occlusion. Another really important pr principle is that of centric relation. So when I'm trying to explain to my patients what this means, I explain to them that there are two places where the jaw feels comfortable. One is the probably the most important position, which is where the joints are seated in their happiest place. And in that position, the muscles also tend to feel relaxed. But there is another position, in most people these, it's a different position, and that's where the teeth meet together best. And that's sometimes called the maximal intercuspation bite. There's lots and lots of different names for things. So what I talk to my patients, I try and really dumb it down for them. And I call that habit bite. Now when you've got competition between habit bite and centric relation, then habit bite always wins. And the reason is, imagine if we had the position where our jaw joints and our muscles are in the most uh, comfortable position, but only one tooth was meeting at that point. All the force would go through these two poor teeth and it would be too much for them and we'd probably get a big problem with those teeth. So I explained to my patients that this is what the teeth would look like if their jaw joints were in the most comfortable position. But what tends to happen is the joints move a little bit and the muscles tense, but then this is what happens. The teeth are able to come together because the jaw compensates for this maximum habit bite. But I explained to them that over time, this sets up tension in the muscles and also in the joints and can, although we know it's not the only reason, can lead to them grinding and clenching their teeth, which can cause a lots, lots of wear and lots of problems with muscles and joints and uh, the teeth and even periodontal problems. So it's very important to make our patients aware that this habit bite is not always the most healthy bite for them. So now is where we start to talk to our patients about trying to harmonize their bite so that this centric relation is coincident with where their habit bite is. So if this is where we, they would bite, if we were to, and the term is deprogram them. So take them away from habit bite and deprogram them so that they go to that position where the joints and the muscles are in their most comfortable position. Then a way we can do that is to provide them with a guard, okay? And the guard has to be made very carefully. And I explained to them that what we can do is make something which has a bit of acrylic there, a little bit here, a little bit more there, so that in this uh, bite, this centric relation bite, everything meets at the same time. These upper teeth will meet against the acrylic at exactly the same time. And this is how we can harmonize CR and their maximum intercuspation bite to give them a very comfortable bite. If we find that our patients are compatible with this new bite, for example, maybe they've had discomfort, they've had headaches or problems with their jaws, and now that they wear this appliance which gives them CR, centric relation, and their MIP, coincident, and symptoms start to improve, then we can talk to them about whether they need to carry on wearing that guard or whether we can do some treatment for them to deliver them a new bite. For example, we could do some composite bonding where we would bond some on this tooth, bit more, bit more here. Or we could give them restorations in porcelain. And this is the principle of rehabilitating our patients so that we're giving them a very nice occlusion, a bite that's coincident and also one that will give them mutual protection as well. 
Another really important facet of having a healthy bite is to make sure that teeth are being loaded the way that they want to be loaded, namely down the long axis. What teeth don't like is, imagine if they're moved like this and then you're loading them like this, the ligaments don't like that kind of uh, force, they don't like that kind of movement and it can lead to bone loss around the tooth. So this is why we sometimes have to upright teeth to make sure that they're being loaded in the correct way. So let's talk a little bit more about when the lower jaw is moving in different directions. When it, the lower jaw slides forwards, we want the lower teeth to slide on the back surface, the palatal surfaces of the upper teeth. When we move sideways, it's easiest, especially when we're doing restorations, if we can slide on just the canine. But in reality, it's nicer if we can slide across two or three teeth. This is what's called group function. Better because it spreads the load amongst certain teeth, but very hard to provide. And that's why if we're doing full mouth rehabilitation or if we are trying to restore canines, what we do, because canines are very good, strong teeth, able to withstand that kind of sideways force, we generally put the force on that tooth. What the um, occlusal system doesn't like as much though, is that if we're sliding to the left, what we don't like is to have the right side teeth contacting as well. When we're moving over to the left, the left side is called the working side, and the right side is called the non-working side. Now, if we have contact on the left-hand teeth, it's further forwards. So we spoke about that class two lever and discussed that the forces further forwards would be less. If we have the right side teeth meeting, it would be the back teeth. And as we mentioned, the back teeth don't really like those lateral forces. So we try to prevent non-working contacts when we're moving uh, to the left. And obviously, we wouldn't want the left side meeting when we're moving to the right. If you enjoyed that talk on occlusion and you found it helpful, then like our page and don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> I like it. <gasps> you know what we've done. <laughs>